Hello everyone, and welcome back to Water Child Tarot. My name is Sarah, and um, it's been a while. Yeah, it's been a minute. I have been doing lots of things, um, but one of them has not been making tarot videos. But I wanted to make this one because I sort of developed this spread um, on my own, and I found it really helpful in the moment that I needed it. So I wanted to share it with you as well. This spread is based on the Buddhist view or principles of body, speech, and mind, but it is not intended to necessarily be about Buddhism. It's just simply a framework that I thought was helpful, and so I thought I'd share it with you all. Um, and it came out of an experience I had where I was trying to investigate a particular organization I was considering joining, and I couldn't think of a spread that really fit the bill to answer the questions that I was trying to ask. And so that's how I came up with this. Um, I think this spread would be particularly helpful if you are thinking about joining an organization and you feel like you're not getting, you're not able to get all of the information that you'd like to have before you make up your mind about what to do. But it could also be about an individual, about investigating an individual person as well. Um, and I'll give some examples of that. So for example, um, if you were meeting up with someone for the first time or getting introduced to them for the first time and you knew that was gonna come up, you could potentially use this spread for that as well. So I'll talk about the spread positions and kind of how they come out of um, Buddhist teachings, but I'm not gonna, again, emphasize this as a spread that needs to have a religious context around it. It's just simply the inspiration for me. Um, and then I'm going to draw some cards and kind of do a sample here. So this came about, like I said, when I was trying to investigate a particular organization. And I was getting some information, but not as much detail as I'd like. And in some cases, my questions were sort of being waved away. It's like, oh, well, never, no one's ever really asked for that. We don't have, we don't have an answer for you. But I still felt like I, I could know more about the leadership in the organization and more about the structure of it and the behind the scenes kind of aspects before I could make up my mind about joining. And it occurred to me that there really are three facets to getting to know um, either a person or an organization. You can look at what's going on inside of them in their mind. <laughs> you can look at how they talk and what kind of information they present in their speech, and then you can look at their actions or what they do with their physical self or physical uh, presence in the world, where they put their resources and their time. And this again has to do with Buddhism in the idea that these are called the, the three gates in Buddhism. This is how information kind of flows back and forth. They're also the means by which we become enlightened or can have access to enlightenment. Um, and they tie in with the three jewels. So if you're familiar at all with Buddhism, you've heard of the three jewels, the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha, or the guru, the teachings, and the students. And so, you know, those do correlate to these three things. Um, let's talk about each of these in a little bit more detail, and then I might be able to be a little bit more cogent in my speech today um, as I'm trying to get these ideas across. So if we look at the mind, we might think about what's going on inside of a person or what's going on behind the scenes in terms of the, the leadership, the goals, the, the kind of mission statement, that sort of thing. So again, this could be the, the, the thoughts, the wisdom of that organization. You know, how well do they know themselves? How, how well do they carry out their mission? How clear are they on what their mission is and what their ethics are? how do they express those things might come up later, but we want to make sure that we understand where they're coming from to begin with. This also can include things like um, their attitude, their point of view, and their biases. So we all have experience that we draw on to make conclusions about things in the world and making sense of new experiences. And are those attitudes, beliefs, and point of view, are they fairly unbiased? Are they open, positive, and curious, and accepting? 
Or are they more skeptical, cynical, negative, judgmental, or even fearful? So what's kind of the, the general attitude of the organization or the people in the organization? And then again, we can look at kind of their wisdom and their direct experience. What are their credentials? Um, what training have they received? What's their background? And then how does that, how might that have influenced their particular approach to life or approach to this field of uh, work? Or, you know, perhaps it is like in my case, maybe it is a religious organization that you're looking in, into. And then what is the philosophy behind that religious organization? How do they um, see themselves as part of maybe a, a greater religious movement or practice? Um, how do they uphold the tenets of that religion, etc. So our next area is speech. And of course, this does mean someone's words and their speech, how they talk. Um, but it can also mean written communication or any kind of communication that you receive. And we want to evaluate speech for the actual words used, the clarity of that communication, what style is it, what format is it, is it appropriate? Is it clear, straightforward, and neutral? Or is it convoluted or limited or exaggerated? In other words, are there things that they don't talk about that they're silent on? Or do they express information freely and openly? And what do they spend time talking about or communicating? Um, especially if this is a, uh, you know, a, a nonprofit or a religious or community organization we want to look at what do they give lip service to and what do they not talk about? What do they not address or acknowledge in their speech, in their communications? Again, if it's a company, how, how might we be able to look at um, what, they, what they say, say on their website or in their uh, uh, an annual report or a mission statement or that kind of thing, and then compare that as we go through this with the other two areas. We also want to look at, are their written communications specific and easy to understand and based in fact? Or are they sort of marketing speak, vague? Uh, do they use a lot of cliches and flowery language without a lot of substance? You know, for an organization, of course, we're looking at um, that kind of PR type of speech. Um, in an individual, because I think this could also work for evaluating a specific person, you just want to see, are they articulating their ideas well? Are they communicating clearly with their assumptions and their expectations? Let's say you got matched with someone on a dating app and then you're privately chatting with them. Are they being open and honest with you? And, you know, are they curious and asking you questions? Or are they sort of, do they have a one-track mind um, th that you assess through their speech? Are they just talking about one thing? Or are they perhaps complaining or bad-mouthing others or just being generally negative? So you can tell a lot about the mind through the speech of the group or the individual. And then thirdly, we come on to the body or the physical space, or it can also mean the actions. So how do the actions of the group, the organization, or the individual reflect the mind and the speech. Um, do they do what they've said they're going to do? So if, the, if you were supposed to meet them for a date at six o'clock, did they show up at six o'clock? Or at least let you know something specific about why they were not able to show up at six o'clock. Again, if, if their speech is all about their organization and how green their organization is and how it's so environmentally friendly, okay, what are the actions in that company that they've taken to really make sure that it is environmentally friendly? What are the specific things that they're doing, um, not just the things they're talking about? And how can you see that action coming uh, to fruition? And then when we talk about the physical state or the health of that person or organization, I would say for an organization, we can look at things like, are their facilities in good working order? Are they well maintained? If you're on a job interview and they're walking you around to where you might uh, have an office space, you know, is that congenial to doing the kind of work that you are supposed to be doing or might be doing for this company? Is it ergonomic? Um, is it going to suit your working style? Is it free of distractions, etc.? 
Um, you know, is the building well maintained? Is the HVAC in good working order so it's a comfortable space to work in? If we were talking about meeting up with an individual, then you might think about, you know, are they well groomed and neat in their physical presentation of themselves? Or are they wearing, you know, really old clothes that are falling apart? Does it look like maybe they are not taking care of themselves very well? Um, that kind of thing. And then again, financial state or status, especially with organizations. We want to make sure organizations are not taking advantage of us. And so what is the financial state uh, and, and, and state of well-being for that organization? Are they um, in a healthy kind of balanced situation where, let's say, tithes or dues or fees or other or, or income if it's a company? Um, is that paying for everything that it needs to pay for? Is it supporting and upholding the organization in a way that's healthy um, without exploiting the, the, either the employees or the members or the, the worshipers, um, without taking advantage of people, without um, you know, maybe saving the big salaries for the C-suite executives or the you know, leaders of that organization? Um, while everyone else is, you know, at a poverty level salary, um, where's where's the balance and the fairness and the equanimity um, in that financial state? And so you can think about this some more and maybe write down some more keywords um, for each of these three that fit with your particular situation or question of the moment. Um, you can tweak these a little bit in the way that you're thinking about them. Again, depending on whether you're looking at an organization or an individual or whether you're looking at um, you know, what kind of organization it is. If, if it's an employer versus a, you know, an after-school program for one of your children, or versus a religious organization, um, versus a charity that you're thinking of donating money to. You know, those are all different scenarios and they're gonna have slightly different flavors of these three, but I think these three components can apply and are important to consider. Um, when you're when you're thinking of you know uh, taking action or moving forward with uh, a particular person or group um, and so now for the second part of this video i just want to do you know a sample reading and um, i'm going to use my santa muerte uh, tarot just because it's small and um, so it'll fit on screen and i like to do three cards for each category so, or each position, you could just do a simple three card spread, body, speech, and mind. Um, but I like to do three for each because I think it gives you more to look at. And I'll give you an example here on the screen before I lay out these cards. Um, so this was a sample reading that I did. I'm not going to go through it because it was you know, fairly personal. Um, but here's one I did for myself, and I, I found that it was very um, helpful. And so I did do the mind in the upper left uh, corner, the speech cards were in the upper, upper right, and then the body cards were below. But you could organize this the, the other way around if that makes more sense to you. So with body at the top, speech in the middle, and mind at the bottom, body, speech, and mind. Okay, so for this one, I'm just gonna lay out some cards and let's see what we get and see if we can make sense of these. So feel free to pause the video if you did have a question um, and see how these cards might answer that question for you. Um, or if you have a particular organization or person you're interested in. Um, I'm not saying this will necessarily apply to that. I think you should you know, shuffle in, in your own deck and do a reading for yourself. But just to practice, um, you know, see if this makes sense uh, for anyone in your life or any organization in your life. All right, so let's start. Um, here with the mind. So let's say this was um, a potential uh, charity that we wanted to, we were thinking about um, joining the charity and actually not just giving the money, but maybe volunteering for this charity. So in the mind category, we have the death card, which in this deck is the Santa Muerte card, the page of cups and the ace of pentacles. So I'm not entirely sure how I might interpret this because I don't have a particular charity in mind. The death card is kind of interesting here um, because of course we show, we see a sort of a pregnant skeleton with the scythe looking at the crib. 
So it might be that this, um, this charity or organization has a lot of uh, turnover, or maybe they're on like a new, a brand new mission or something like that. They have a new set of values that they're looking at. And um, with a page and an ace here, I would say maybe the, the organization itself is not really sure how, how they're going to take on this new mission. So something's being renewed or reborn or refreshed here or going away. And I think internally, um, they're not quite sure what to do with that. They're, they're, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but they are getting to grips with that. Um, on the speech side of things, uh, we have the Hermit, the Four of Swords, and the Four of Pentacles. And I see this as rather conservative and closed off, the Hermit being withdrawn, and then two Fours cards being on the conservative side or, you know, the structure side. And so it could be that the, um, the speech aspect is just very... Um, cut and dry, you know, it, it's it's the PR department or or the communications department of this organization kind of knows what it's doing and it, and it churns out the same information and kind of says the same stuff over and over again. Um, but I'm not getting a lot of openness here. I'm getting it sort of, it's a bit closed off um, and unavailable beyond that kind of, you know, standard boiler, boilerplate stuff. So, it might be advantageous to ask some more questions of someone there um, if they can give you more information because it seems like that might be difficult to get a lot of information about uh, what the organization is doing, especially in light of this kind of change up in the, the values or the leadership um, or whatever it is that's changing over here. And then in the body, it's interesting that we have a, um, an ace in the mind uh, and also an ace in the body category. Um, here we have Justice, the Ten of Pentacles, and the Ace of Wands. And it seems to me like this is fairly positive that, that the body, the actions of this organization or the, the, the things that the people on the ground are doing in this charity, this hypothetical charity, that they do carry out the mission of this organization and it's justice focused. Um, and that they are trying to leave a legacy behind for the next group. So, so each group, as it finishes its project or its, you know, one part of the mission, leaves behind enough resources that the next group can kind of pick up and run with that. That's sort of how I read this, this section here. Um, so taken together, you know, it's interesting that the leadership is turning over or, you know, choosing a new direction. Maybe they just don't know how to communicate that yet. And so they haven't communicated very much. Um, but the, the people on the ground, the day to day um, folks or the financial financial um, support system of this organization seems to be pretty, pretty good, pretty healthy. So this is just one example. I would love to hear your thoughts if you decide to try this, and hopefully I explained it well enough, but let me know if you come up with some other sort of keywords or, or thoughts about each of the, the three categories or three spread positions here. Um, and yeah, and if you want to share maybe um, specific you know, questions or organizations um, that you're looking into, I'd love to see those in the comments as well. Thank you again for watching and um, I appreciate your patience with me as I'm not making as many videos these days, but hopefully um, still you know, continuing to engage in, uh, in the tarot community in, in small ways. I hope you're all well and I will talk to you again later. Bye bye.